Okay, one more time on the Islamic empires, my fourth time. Okay, here we go. So these are your gunpowder empires that have been around. Um, the Ottomans have been around since the 1200s, but collectively they're around from 1500 to 1800. So you have the Ottomans, the Safavids, and the Mughals. I have guest commentators in the room, so if y'all want to say hi. Hi, I'm hey. Anthony Rodriguez. Hope's in here. Anna's in here. Say hi, Anna. Hi. Now everyone's on the podcast. Okay. So the Ottomans start with capturing parts of Anatolia from the Byzantines with cavalry and uh, gunpowder technology, which this is how all three empires start expanding, and I'll get into comparisons later on. Um, they start taking over the Balkans region, and it's there that they start their practice of devshirmi, which is where they would force Christian families to surrender their boys to military service, they would castrate them, they would grow up in the military, and then often they would become part of this elite group called Janissaries. This was the Ottomans' way of getting Christians out of their empire, even though they're religiously tolerant and you just have to pay a tax. But this is their way of getting rid of Christians. So the most important person that you need to no is Mehmed the Conqueror, who is responsible bleh, responsible for the capture of Constantinople in 1453. This is a super important date that you need to know. Where is my pen? Super important. Know that date. He renames it Istanbul. And he's going to basically be responsible for the transformation from warrior to emperor and so he is going to be the ruler of two different lands and this is going to be a problem for the ottomans the fact that they are of two different continents europe and asia and they're never ever going to be able to find an identity for themselves so like i said remember mehmed constantinople in 1453 suleiman the magnificent with his lovely awesome onion hat it's like my favorite hat of anybody in history he's known as suleiman the lawgiver but he's pretty much the height of the Ottomans. This is when they've expanded everywhere. He's developing a naval power, and he's pretty much like the height of art and culture and just everything great about the empire because after his reign ends in 1566, that's kind of when they start to decline, and they decline all the way until 1923. Hey, so the Safavid. Safavids was founded by Ismael the Younger, who was 14 years old when he took over. And he becomes Shah. I will check. And I will let you know tomorrow. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. And depending on who you talk to, the Safavids always... Um, change their conquering story to fit whoever they were talking to. But basically, Ismael went and with his military just kind of conquered, you know, what used to be the Persian Empire. He became Shah and proclaims the official religion to be Twelver Shiism. And Twelver Shiism is, it sounds weird, but it's no different than Mandate of Heaven or Divine Right of Kings. In that after Muhammad, you had 12 infallible imams. The 12th imam was in hiding and ready to take power. Um, and so that's kind of how they justified their rule, that their ruler was this 12th imam. And they would wear distinctive red hats like the followers were. So that that way you could distinguish who was a true believer in the religion and who wasn't. The Ottomans and the Safavids get involved in the Battle of Chaldron in 1514. This is one of these events that is kind of important. The Ottomans go and atta attack the Safavids, and it's because they thought there were like spies in their empire, and like the Sunni Muslims were trying to. I'm sorry, the Shia Muslims were trying to like subvert the Sunnis, and it was like this big conflict, and the. Safavids wanted to be manly and honorable in their fighting and wanted to use gun, uh, weapons like that weren't guns. They wanted to use swords. The Ottomans were like, no, we're going to bring our guns. So they used their gunpowder technology and were able to defeat the Safavids. There's this ongoing conflict for like two centuries. And so 
And after the Safavids had been defeated, Shah Abbas the Great realized that the Safavids were weak. And so he goes and tries to revitalize them. He fixes their administration, their military. He's expanding trade. This is when they get involved in the sale of like Persian rugs. He works on fixing up their military. So he is the one who is responsible for fixing them. Anytime someone is called the Great, that's pretty much what that means, is that's the height of their empire. Okay, the Mughals. You have Zari al-Din Muhammad, also known as Babur the Tiger, who is the founder of the Mughal Empire. So he is able to go and start off by invading northern India and then slowly move south. To kind of legitimize his rule, he's just just saying that they're descendants from the Mongols, and so that's why they call themselves the Mughals, because it's Persian for Mongol. Akbar the Great, who was Babur's grandson, um, takes over. He is known for being extremely tolerant of other religions, and he kind of makes his own religion called Divine Faith, and it's a blend of Islam and Hinduism. Um, a very strong central government under Akbar. He was very hands-on, went around, made sure his rulers were doing what they were supposed to. Um, he was very well respected by his people and feared, also because he liked to throw people out of windows. One of his advisors who had like challenged him, Akbar threw him out the window, and then just to make sure he was dead, they dragged him back upstairs and threw him out a second time. So, like, this is the kind of person he was with his lovely mustache and sideburns in the picture. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and then come back and do the comparisons of all three empires. When we're doing the 